Tonight, scores of ghosts and goblins will fill the streets, hoping to score a lot of candy. But they're not the only ones you need to consider. It's supposed to be fun for them, but can be downright terrifying for pets. Sally Westerhoff with the Quincy Humane Society is nice enough to join us this morning with some pet safety tips for Halloween. First and foremost, how do you handle pets on a night like this when you're going to have a lot of visitors? Um, it's probably best to, to put them in a quiet room so that they're um, away from all of the noise and the activity. Um, and this would uh, help prevent them from getting scared and running out the door mm. when you've got it open for your trick-or-treaters. So it can be a very scary night for them because um, probably most of us have pretty quiet households. The doorbell's not ringing all the time and um, all of those funny costumes can be really scary for pets. Sure. I didn't mention you brought uh, your little guy Homer here dressed as a oh, devil <laughs> to join us this morning. <laughs> also want to talk about um, some dangers of Halloween candy and such for animals. Yes, chocolate, particularly the dark chocolates, are poisonous for animals. So you want to make sure you get those um, bowls of treats mm -hmm. up out of the reach of the pets. Um, the foil wrappers, cats can be very entertained by batting around foil, but if they ingest it, it can cause them uh, severe medical problems. So keep the candy up out of the reach and uh, keep the pets safe. How much chocolate is toxic to a dog? I think it probably depends upon the size of the uh -huh. dog and how dark the chocolate is. So um, I can't give you an exact amount, uh, but um, just to be safe, I would just keep it out of their reach. What about if someone wants to go trick-or-treating with their pets? Is that a good idea? Uh, probably not, but if you do, you want to make sure that their costume is properly fitting. Um, that it doesn't obscure their, uh, or it doesn't um, obstruct their ability to move. Um, their hearing or their vision and you want to make sure they have a properly fitting collar so it should be like two fingers under the collar uh, so it doesn't slip over their head and um, make sure they have tags on. Homer has on his microchip tag, a personalized tag and his rabies tag so if something did happen um, they're, they're uh, well identified. He's also microchipped okay. so um, if he would, if something would happen, um, these things are all going to help him get home. Okay, just like you treat your kids, make sure yep. they, they, you know, know where they are or, you know, know who they are, I guess is the main thing. <laughs> Sally, thanks so much for coming in this Thank morning. Thank you. Happy Halloween to you.